In this video, we're going to look at trading clues from the market's engine. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So interesting one, this, right? Uh, we often have the market or a specific market is being moved by the power of another market. So that I call the market's engine. Now this doesn't always apply and often it's very, very broad. So for example, you could have trade war with China is one of the engines. The price of oil is one of the engines. The yen is one of the engines and it often goes in cycles throughout the decades or the years, depending on what the global thing is at the time. Is it tax, is it this, is it that, is it the other? And that's an overview. But very often, and that's obviously a bigger engine that we kind of need to keep in touch with and tune with, because if we know that other traders are looking at that, then we can kind of hypothesize what they're, how they're positioned and how they respond to different news articles and different news stories and breaking news and whatever. But regardless of that, I want to look at trading clues from the market's engine when it happens to be very, very, very correlated on a one day, normally two day basis. So we might have to often have something like this. So the inverse proportion of USD to gold, gold weakening or gold strengthening, uh, sorry, US dollar strengthening or gold, US dollar strengthening or US dollar weakening normally has the inverse relationship to gold. So if we take that for example, so if US dollar strengthening and gold is weakening, we would have obviously a chart, our USD strengthening, our gold weakening. So this, what we're trying to talk about in this video guys is the trading clues from that and whether we should be trading the primary engine, i.e. let's say for example, something has come out and USD is strengthening and gold is weakening off the back of that. Let's just assume that relationship is, is happening. And by the way, I wanna just add this. There are relationships that we kind of assume are gonna happen. Like this is the assumptive one, the inverse correlation of, of commodities with USD. Uh, and these in a second we'll look at. This is the assumption, but there's also what's actually happening in real time. Very often I've seen these correlations break and they've had, kind of had stuff move in line, weirdly. And it's normally because there's a couple of extra layers of things that happen, i.e. You know, maybe someone will assume the interest rates will go up because of that strength or because of this or because of that. And that will then mean this and that will then mean that for that country and that country. And so that means that commodity will do that. There's always, there might be some different reasons. So what I'm getting at is it's important to see what is actually happening at the time. Yes, we're assuming this, but if it happens to be a direct relationship or in a positive correlation, then just trade that. Trade what is actually happening, not what's supposed to happen. Anyway, back to the point. So let's say we've got USD strength, gold weakness. Uh, these clues, do we trade the USD strength and say, well, US dollar strong today, or do we trade the second tier play? In my experience, the second tier play is where the edge is at. So I wanna look at those in a second, but first of all, let's look at some other correlations just so we can kind of wrap it around our head of what's happening. So let's say, for example, oil is, by the way, this isn't gonna be a small move, just because dollar's slightly strong today, doesn't gold won't be slightly weak. And we've had have had phases where they have almost moved in inverse lockstep, but it's gonna be where something's come out extremely moved one in one direction and the others have a knock on effect because of that. So for example, let's say oil comes out massive, massive spike. What are the explorers, oil exploring companies gonna do? They're probably gonna spike up as well because all of a sudden by doing exactly the same thing, they're making more money. Maybe the refiners will have an inverse relationship. It's gonna depend on the commercial aspect of them. But very often, if oil is rising, the cost of the oil is X, that's their cost of their, their produce, if you like. And if they're not getting that lift in the fuels and, and the crack spread that comes along with that, then they may well be impacted. Now that's probably going a little bit too deep because you have to look at see what the byproducts of the cracking process of they're doing as well and they may well be going up as well in which case the refiner's margin is not going to be the same but you know explorers is a, is a, is a better example and same with gold you know if gold's down gold miners going to be down because if gold's down heavily the gold miners all of a sudden just from nothing at all are going to be making less money digging out a, a ton of gold from the ground they're going to make x for it now they've suddenly made you know 80 percent of x everything else remains the same which is bad for a company right so this is obvious relationships. So the point is, do we trade the primary or the secondary? Now, if we trade the primary, we're just trading the primary, and yes, there's still some value to be had from that. We can trade it and assume it's an uptrend and put all our setups that we do with extreme supply and demand imbalance into that. Or we can go one step further. And we can say, okay, this is our primary market, whatever it may be, let's say it's gold or USD, and this is driving 
you know, whatever the secondary markets may be. And this also applies, guys, for shares. You know, very often, one of my strategies probably 10 years ago was trading miners on London Stock Exchange. Big first tier miners would all move in one direction and have these little smaller second and third tiers that would kind of, you know, be panting and running along alongside these bigger miners. And often there'd be a little bit of a lag move. There'd be a secondary move on it. They'd be a bit late to go. Um, you know, they'd stall a little bit. And so you could, you could trade like that. But so you, there's multiple ways of doing this. But the point is we're trading a primary, looking at a primary and using it to trade a secondary asset as, as, a, as a proxy almost. So the good thing is here, let's say for example, we've seen strength coming up here. And let's say now we see this and we've seen it move in lockstep. It's not gonna be exactly, not gonna see an identical chart. Or it could be inverse as well, guys, if we're looking at obviously an inverse relationship. Um, so what would we do now? The thing is, if we have said to ourselves, hey, this is a great place to buy um, dollar, for example, it's strong, it's been an uptrend, it's a little pullback on a flag, and now we're pushing back up and stop here. Now you can get yourself a little bit of a head start very often by saying, okay, well, instead of buying the dollar there, let me short the proxy, let me short gold from there because I know gold's getting weak. Let me short gold, whatever the price may be, and let me use this as almost the trigger, but saying that actually I'll have a little head start on everybody else because I'm dollars just dipped here, gold's probably popped a little bit. Let me go short gold expecting that response to be still as strong. And what I'll do is I'll hold gold until it breaks through, dollar breaks through that high, because if dollar breaks through that high, gold will probably break through the low. And breaking through the low is more powerful, generally more fear. I'm gonna get more reward for the risk than if I just took that dollar trade. So it's something to consider, guys. If you're looking at the market's engine, as I say, there's a macro view to it, we should always take into account during our trading, but also intraday. And this is, applies you know, often for intraday and swing trading as well. But specifically on intraday, when we're seeing that real interesting lockstep or inverse lockstep, saying, okay, let me look at the primary and use the trading clues from the market's engine to actually execute in a secondary um, you know, stock, secondary company secondary commodity even a secondary currency that's been fueled by its own news it's affecting the others let's trade the others based on what is happening with the price action and setups in the primary market all right guys if that's piqued your interest and if that's kind of um made you think a little bit add some thoughts in the comment section below always interested to hear what you guys have got to say if you like this kind of stuff thumbs up and if you're a subscriber i do appreciate your support and if you're not maybe consider doing so uh, for more videos from me on this and more price action type topics. Take care, bye-bye.